Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video I'll be showing you two different ways of finishing off cording ends so that you can add clasps for either necklaces or bracelets. And this does work equally well with something like suede, leather, or cotton cord. Of course, I will be showing you just the ways that I do this. There are lots of different techniques out there. This is just how I do it. Like I said, this does work with pretty much any kind of cording you might like to use. I do prefer to use the waxed black cotton cording, which I purchased from Amazon. I believe this is about a 2 millimeter diameter cord. I will leave a link below for the exact thing I'm using, though, and where you can get it. For wire though, we're just going to be using some 20 gauge round dead soft wire in any kind you like. I will be working with copper from RioGrande.com. So for our first style, you're going to want to cut your cording about 2 inches longer than you want your finished thing to be. So I will go ahead and measure out a 19 inch piece to make an 18 inch cord. And then we'll also want to cut some wire, so I'm going to pull that out. And for the first style, we're going to cut two pieces of about two and a half inches long wire. So taking one of those pieces of wire, I'm just going to grip right in the middle of it with my round nose pliers and put kind of a little U-shaped bend in here. That's just going to make the next step a little bit easier. Because what we're going to do is take our cording, and you want to loop kind of the first inch of it over on itself so that we're creating a little loop with it right there just about an inch in, and then you can take your U-shaped piece here that you've made, slide that right on top of it, and what we're going to do is start wrapping this very tightly around both of these layers at the end of the cording here that we've looped over on itself. And this can be a little tricky, so I'm just going to use my left hand to kind of stabilize everything where I want it to be, and then you want to put your first bend in the wire here using chain nose pliers. I'm just going to tighten that shape that we already started on down. So I'm pinching it very tightly, so you can see it's grabbing the cording just like that. And then we're just going to start wrapping both of these ends around multiple times. Again, pinching each wrap down very tightly as we go. And what this is going to do is kind of compress that cording um, so that it creates a very tight seal that it can't slip out of this wire wrap that we're doing. Okay, so there's one we've done there. We'll do another one. And again, I'm putting each wrap right next to the previous one. We'll put in another one. And there's three. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I have probably five or six good wraps around this cording here. And you do want to make sure that you leave a big enough open loop at the top, right in here so that you can put a jump ring or something through there to attach your clasp. So I've gotten to the end of this tail. I'm just going to smush that end on down, kind of pressing it into the cording there so that there is no loose end that can scratch your neck as you're wearing this. And you can double check with your fingers just to make sure. Alright, so let's go to the other end now. And you can see I'm kind of compressing this coil we've got going on with my chain nose pliers. So let's wrap this end around a few times as well. And again, once you get maybe five or six really good wraps around there, what we're going to do is pull this longer end of the cording off to the side so it's out of the way. I'm just going to kind of protect it with the finger of my left hand so I don't cut it by accident. I'm just going to trim off the excess of this little end as close as I can get to that coil that we made. So you'll want some nice sharp scissors for this. I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. So we've cut that very close. And then very simply with your final wrap you can go over that kind of frayed loose end there to hide it a little bit. So I'll just do one more wrap there with this tail to kind of go over that loose end and just tighten everything on down. And you'll probably have a little bit more wire than you need. That's all right. We can just snip that off with our flush cutters. And as before with the other wire end, we'll just press that on down against the cording to make sure there's no loose scratchy end on that wire. 
So that is the first method, as you can see, very simple and it's also very secure because I can pull really hard on this and because that cord compresses, wrapping the wire tightly around it really locks everything in and it's not going to come apart. As you can see, I was pulling pretty hard and nothing was budging there. One drawback of this style, though, is that you will have somewhat of a friction point because, of course, when you attach your clasp, you'll need to use a jump ring or something to go through that little loop that we just made, as you can see right there. And that does create a friction point where, as you're wearing this, you will have the metal rubbing against the exposed cord, which will shorten the life of this somewhat because that can eventually wear through to where it will fray and break. I haven't personally found that to be a problem with the kind of expected lifespan of jewelry anyway, but if you are concerned about that, there's another style which takes care of it. As you can see here with this one, we've actually encased completely the end of the cord, so there's no friction point at all. We have a little loop here made out of metal on the end, which is our connecting point, and so the cord doesn't get rubbed on at all. So let me show you how to do that style as well. So again, I'm going to cut a length of this cord, and for this one you don't need to add too much extra length, maybe just about an inch or so extra past the length you want your finished cord to be. And for this one, I will be using a little bit of super glue to reinforce the ends. If you're using something like leather that doesn't fray, you can probably skip this step. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to take your standard super glue, not the gel kind, just the normal. I'm going to put a little drop of it on each end of this cording, just a little bit so that it can kind of soak in and just reinforce that cording a little bit so it doesn't unravel. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry a little bit. And once that little drop of super glue on each end has dried, what I'm actually going to do is just snip off the end here where it has frayed a little bit. And what this is going to do, since the super glue kind of soaks in along the, uh, along the tip of the cording here, by cutting off that frayed bit, this area is still hardened up with the glue, so we've kind of just created a firm end that will not fray at all. It's reinforced a little bit. So that's the reasoning behind that. Again, you could skip that step if you're using leather or suede, probably. I'm just going to snip off that frayed end there. So we now have two fray-proof ends on our cotton cord. Okay, so go ahead and pull out your 20-gauge wire. We're going to cut some more lengths of that. So for this ending style, we will need a slightly longer piece of wire for each end. We're going to want a 3-inch piece or so. And for this one, we're going to go in and measure about 3 quarters of an inch from one of the ends. I will just make a mark there with my nail. And that's where we're going to make our first little bend. What we're going to do first is actually form a little loop to go on the end of our cording so that we can attach a clasp on there. So at that mark, I'm just going to bend the longer tail off to the side slightly. Then pulling out our round nose pliers, we're just going to put a little loop in here. And you can make this as big or small as you want. I think it looks good to have it be ever so slightly larger than the diameter of our cording. So we've got a loop there with the tail going off to the side, as you can see. And at this point, we're just going to pull out the cording we prepared earlier. And I'm going to lay it right next to that little shorter tail so that the end of it just meets that top loop that we made, okay? So we've got our wire tail and the end of our cording. And I'm going to hold both of those together with my left hand. And then what we're going to do is wrap this longer tail around both the cording and this shorter wire tail. Again, as before, pinching it down very tightly so that it stays nice and secure. And the first wrap for this can be the hardest one to put in. So I'm just going to get that kind of started without the cording on there. As you can see, I'm starting to wrap it around a little bit to encourage that shape forming. And then we'll add the cord and just start wrapping this tail around. And this is a little bit trickier than the first style to get the cord positioned just where you want it. But I do like this one as well because it creates a more secure uh, finishing option that's not going to fray over time. 
All right, and like I said, that first wrap that kind of captures the tip of your cording is going to be the trickiest one to do. Once you have that one in, you can really just start wrapping the tail around. And as before, you want to smush down and tighten each wrap as you go. So really pressing that down tightly and making sure each wrap is placed right next to the previous one. So I'm just going to keep going around, putting those wraps in, tightening it down as we go. And I'm going to keep doing this again until we have five or six good wraps in there. Alright, and once you start getting close to the end of your wire tail, what we're going to want to do is snip off this excess little spike we have here. So I'm just going to pull out my flush cutters and just cut that off real close to the, uh, to the wraps we've made, being careful not to nick the cord as we do that. So you can see that there. And then we'll just finish wrapping this tail around. And you should have about one wrap of this tail that is just around the cording. And as before, we're just going to smoosh that end on down really tight against the cord so that there are no loose ends. So that is our second style. Of course, with both of these, you would just finish off the, end of, the other end of your cord the exact same way. And then you can just add any kind of clasp you like with a jump ring. Uh, of course, you could use a commercial one. I do like to make these handcrafted hook and loop clasps, which I've done several tutorials on different styles of these. I will leave a link for those where you can view them if you are interested. As you can see with these, I just wrapped the um, clasps directly onto the loop there, so there's no jump ring, there's nothing that can open up and come loose. Of course, you can also use the jump ring as an in-between, like that. And if you wanted these to be somewhat adjustable, you could also add a little length of large chain here that you could put your clasp into. Maybe a two inch extender chain kind of thing would be cool. So those are two different styles. Let me know in the comments section which one you guys prefer. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. If so, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing. And if you are subscribed and want to receive notifications when I post new videos, you can also click that little notification bell and select all. You'll just receive one email whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you enjoy making this. I will see you next time. Happy crafting!